In this webcast, we'll examine the tetroses, pentoses, and hexoses in more detail. But before we do, I would advise you to go ahead and build a model of a simple tetros, such as erythros, and work with it for the duration of this lesson. We will come to see that the molecular shapes implied by Fischer projections of the longer sugars are different from the zigzag line angle shapes you're used to. Using a molecular model is a straightforward way to convert between Fischer projections and line angle drawings. Our first goal in this webcast is to convert erythros and threos from Fischer projections into their more comfortable zigzag forms. To help us on this quest, I built a JMOL model of erythros and placed it in an orientation perfect for drawing its Fischer projection. Notice that the aldehyde of this sugar is at the top of the projection, while the hydroxyl and hydrogen arms are pointing out toward you, and the carbon atoms are pointing away from you. Moving to the second stereocenter, we see that if we roll the molecule over slightly, the horizontal groups on this carbon atom are coming out towards us, while the vertical groups are going back away from us. Both hydroxyl substituents on the two stereocenters are pointing to the right, which is consistent with the given Fischer projection. Now watch what happens when I bring the carbon chain into the plane of the screen. Instead of the usual zigzag that we're used to, we see a sort of C shape formed by the carbon backbone. To depict the molecule in its zigzag form, we must imagine rotating around the central carbon-carbon bond to push the aldehyde group upwards. Although right now both hydroxyl groups are pointing towards us, you will see that after the necessary bond rotation, one of the hydroxyl groups rotates away from us. At this point, we've achieved the desired confirmation. Notice that although the two hydroxyl groups are pointing the same way in the Fischer projection, they are trans in this zigzag projection. Erythros and threos differ only in the configuration of the stereocenter alpha to the carbonyl group. Thus, to generate the zigzag conformation of threos, we need only to exchange the hydrogen and hydroxyl groups on the alpha position of erythros. We call molecules that differ only in the configuration of a single stereocenter epimers. Now let's turn our attention to 5 and 6 carbon sugars. We'll begin with an important class of pentoses, the aldopentoses. These 5 carbon sugars contain an aldehyde group, that's why they're called aldopentoses. D-ribose is probably the most important member of this family and is an important component of ribonucleic acids, or RNA. Try building a model of D-ribose to convert its Fischer projection into the line angle drawing you see here. The carbonyl group of monosaccharides does not necessarily need to reside at the one position. Ketoses contain a ketone functional group and possess a carbonyl on one of the internal carbons. The most important 6-carbon ketohexose is D-fructose, one constituent of the disaccharide sucrose. As before, bond rotations of the C-shaped conformation of fructose allow us to generate the more familiar zigzag conformation. From a biological standpoint, the aldohexoses are probably the most important monosaccharides. These sugars possess six carbons and an aldehyde group at the one position. Three important stereoisomers are shown for you here, D-mannose, D-glucose, and D-galactose. Notice that glucose and mannose are epimeric at C2, while glucose and galactose are epimeric at C4. Try imagining the C-shaped conformations for these sugars and drawing those out alongside their zigzag conformations.